Welcome to first section. This section is about HTML basics. Obviously, we are at the start point of the web development learning path. So let's start from what does HTML mean. HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language. This language was created in 1993 by Tim Berners-Lee, who known as the father of the World Wide Web. It was a very little history of HTML. Now let's go to my desktop. This is my desktop. I want to teach you how to create an HTML document by the easiest way. For doing this, I open Notepad from a start menu. Probably you know this program. This is a simple text editor for Windows. Please attention. I don't want to write any HTML codes in this lecture. I just want to create a blank HTML document. So I don't write anything. I just click on file menu. Then I click on save as. No, I have to choose my desired path in my computer. I click on desktop. I name my file index. Now I have to write my document type. I write .html. Now I choose an HTML as my file type. Then from encoding part, I select UTF-8, which is best encoding for HTML documents. And finally, I click on save. As you can see here, my document is saved in desktop. Document icon is my browser icon, which is Google Chrome. It means that my computer detected the document as a web page and by default opens it by Google Chrome. I open the document. As expected, we just see a blank and white page. So far, we have learned how to create an HTML document. In this lecture, we are going to learn tags. Tags are the main constituent of HTML. Let's check tags in Notepad. A tag is like this. Less than sign, tag name, greater than sign. This is the general form of a tag. There is two types of tags, a start tag and end tag. This is a start tag. An end tag is like this less than sign a slash tag name greater than sign this is the general form of an end tag each tag has a name and a content content of a tag must be put between a start tag and end tag like this a start tag content and tag From a start tag to end tag is called an element. In HTML, you can nest tags. For example, I open a tag in my document. Then I open another tag. Now I close them in correct order. But the important point is that when you want to write nested tags, you must observe discipline of the tags. For example, when I open first tag, then I open second tag, I can't first close first tag, like this. So, this is wrong and this is correct. In this lecture, we are going to learn HTML general structure. I open Notepad to write an HTML general structure. HTML codes starts by a tag called HTML. All the codes I am writing from now on will be put in HTML tag. Then inside HTML tag, I put two tags called head and body.
to understand browsers that our web page use the fifth edition of HTML before all the codes I write less than sign exclamation duck type HTML greater than sign well done this is general structure of all web pages in the world other content of web page must be put inside head tag and body tag in the body tag things which are to appear in the page will be putted like text images and anything that you can see in a web page but in the head tag some comments about web page behavior will be putted for example there is a tag for inside the head tag which refresh the web page every few seconds now i save this document in my desktop as html I open this document which we created in previous lecture. It opens by Google Chrome. In Chrome I can't edit my document and I just can't see results of my HTML codes. I keep Chrome windows open then I open the document again but this time by notepad. Now I can watch and edit my codes. As I said we have to put the elements that are to be displayed inside the body tag. So in the body, I write a simple text. Now I save this by press Ctrl and S. Now I go to browser and I refresh the document. As you can see, that text is displayed. Now I want to introduce first tag to you. That is B tag. This tag bold its content, so I put this text inside the B tag. I save the document, then I refresh document again. As you can see, my text is bold. Now I want to teach you a new type of tags. Empty tags. Empty tags just can't to be open. They don't need to an end tag. Also they have not any content. I want to introduce one of them. That is HR tag. This tag create a horizontal line in our web page which take all of our browser width. Let's test it. It works as I said. In this lecture, I want to teach you a new topic. I have an HTML document with basic HTML codes. I create a B tag with a simple text. In HTML, there is something called attribute. Attributes are used for tags. Each tag has some special attributes that we can use them. Some attributes are just for one tag, some of them are for a few tags and some of them can be used for all of the tags. Each attribute has a number of specified values. For example, if I want to assign an attribute to this tag, after tag name, I make a space, then I write my attribute and its value like this. But this is just an example and it is not an attribute called attribute. I want to introduce the first attribute to you, which is content editable. There is two values for this attribute, false and true. I write this attribute. If I choose true, then I can to edit my elements to content in the browser. I choose true. Now let's test this attribute. I go to my browser. Then I click on my text. As you can see, 
it is editable. There is a type of attributes which have not any value. This text colored boolean. There is a boolean attribute colored hidden. I use this on the B tag. I refresh my browser. As you can see in results, this boolean attribute can hide an element. In HTML, there is a topic called comments. Sometimes you need to write something in HTML codes that should not display in browser. It means we just need to see them in the HTML codes. In these cases, we use comments. In this document, you can see basic HTML codes. I write my name in a B tag. My name is Alex Garden. Well, now I write the following text is the in a structure name. I don't want to show this text in results or better to say browser. So I turn this text into a comment. For this work, before the text I write less than sign, exclamation, dash dash and after the text i write dash dash greater than sign it means that you should write your text between this and this now i save it and i go to my browser as you can see that text is not displayed welcome to second section as you know this section is about basic tags and its attributes in html so let's start it. First tag is P. P tag is used to create a paragraph. This tag make a blank line before and after of its content. Or better to say that this tag make a line break before and after of its content. I create a P element for example. As you can see, there is a line break before and after of this content. Next tag is BR. This is an empty tag which creates a line break. When I write something in HTML code, then I go to the next line by pressing enter. You can't see this line break in browser. So when I create a line break by pressing enter in HTML codes, this is just working in HTML codes, not in the browser. So when I want to create a line break, I should use a BR tag. I give you an example. I write two texts and I press enter between them. As you can see, these two texts are stick together. Now I create a BR tag between them. As you can see, BR tag created a line break between two texts. Next tag is HR that I previously explained it. This tag created a horizontal line in web page which takes the complete width of browser. Excuse me. It works as I said. Next tag is title. This tag should be used in the head tag in here. This tag specifies a name for the document. I use title tag and inside it I write practical document. Now I refresh my page. As you can see, that text is displayed here as title of the document. In this lecture, before anything, I want to introduce a new text editor to you, Adobe Dreamweaver. This is one of the best softwares for code editing, especially for web development. From now on, I use this text editor in the course.
After the Dreamweaver opens, I press Ctrl and N to create a new document. I select HTML, then I click on the Create button. As you can see, basic HTML codes are written by default. Now I press Ctrl and S to save my document. I save it in my desktop. I name it index.html. Now let's get down to business. Next tags that I want to introduce to you are heading tags. These tags are from h1 to h6. This tag defines headings in HTML pages. H1 defines the most important heading and H6 defines the least important heading. I give you an example from each of them. As you can see, their sizes range is from large to small. Next tag that I want to teach you is ABBR. Suppose you have a text in your page and you want to show some text within the most hour and element. For this case, you should use ABBR tag. You must put your desired text inside an ABBR element. Then you have to assign an attribute called title to the ABBR element and give this the text which you want to show when the most hour the element. I write W H O as main text, and for the text which will be shown when the most over the main text, I write World Health Organization. Now let's test it. It works as I said. Next tag is B, which I previously explained it. B tag make its content bold. I give you an example for this tag. It works as I say. I create a line break by the BR tag. Next tag is BDI. BDI stands for BI Directional Isolation. The BDI tag isolates a part of text that might be formatted in a different direction from other text outside it. For example, suppose that you have a part in your web page to show current usernames. A user can to be from everywhere with any language. If a username be written with a language which is not left to right, your text may be cluttered. So we can put usernames in BDI tags to solve this probable problem. As I said, some attributes in HTML can be used for every tag. These attributes are called global attributes. In this lecture, I want to start introducing these attributes to you. First global attributes As I said, some attributes in HTML can be used for every text. These attributes are called global attributes. In this lecture, I want to start introducing these attributes to you. First global attribute is class. With this attribute, you can specify one or more class name for an element. For example, I create a B tag. Then I specify a class for it. I write username as class name. If you want to specify more than one class for an element, you can separate classes with a space like this. You will understand the usage of classes in CSS and JavaScript. I create a line break 
Next global attribute is content editable, which I previously explained it. It takes two values, true or false. If I give it true value, content of this element will be editable. I give you an example. It works as I said. Next global attribute is DIR, which specifies the text direction for the content in an element. This attribute takes two values, LTR or RTL. LTR stands for left to right and RTL stands for right to left. We are writing English, so I give it LTR as value. Next global attribute is draggable, which specifies whether an element is draggable or not. Value of this attribute can be true or false. If it be true, the element will be draggable. I give you an example. It works as I said. Next global attribute is hidden, which previously I explained it. This is a boolean attribute which hide an element. For example, I create a v tag with a simple text. Now I assign a hidden attribute to it. As you can see, that text is hidden in the browser. Next global attribute is ID, which specifies a unique ID for an element. Each element can only have one ID. I give you an example. You will understand usage of this attribute in CSS and JavaScript. Next global attribute is lang, which specifies the language of the element's content. Each language has a two-letter code. I'll give you a txt file that all languages' codes are written in it. You can download this file from documents of current lecture. Usage of the lang attribute is for so topic. I give you an example. Next global attribute is tab index. This attribute specifies the tab order of an element, I mean when the tab button is used for navigating. For example, I create three P elements. I assign a tab index attribute to all of them. I set third tab in third tab index for first element. Second tab index for second P element. And first tab index for third P element. Now let's check it. I am pressing tab button. And as you can see, P elements will select it in the order I set it. So far, we have learned all global attributes. From next lecture, we will continue text formatting tags. As I said, from this lecture onwards, I continue text formatting tags topic. Next tag is site, 
the site tag defines the title of a work. For example, I write Titanic movie by James Cameron distributed in 1995, 97. In this text, Titanic is the title of the work, so I put in the site element. As you can see, Titanic word is brighted a little different. Next tag is I. The I tag defines a part of text in an alternate voice or mood. The content of the I tag is usually displayed in italic. I give you an example from I tag. I write my name is Alex Garden. Now I put Alex Garden in the I element. Excuse me. As you can see, Alex Garden text is displayed italic. Next tag is EM. We can put an emphasis of text in this tag. Visually, this is like the I tag because this tag also makes its content italic. I give you an example. It works as I said. Next tag is called a string. We can put an important text in this tag. This tag makes its content bold. I give you an example from this. As you can see, my desired text is bold. Next tag is code. Sometimes you may need to write a computer code in your page. In these cases, you can put your code inside the code element. I give you an example for this. I write a piece of code with PHP programming language. Excuse me. It nicely works. Next tag is del. With this tag you can to put a line on your content. Suppose you have an internet shop and you want to show a discount. I put price before discount in the del element. Then I write current price. As you can see, it nicely works. Next tag is INS. This tag creates a line under its content. I give you an example. It works as I said.
Next tag is you, which works like INS tag. Both of these tags create a line under their content. It works as I said. Next tag is DFN. The DFN tag represents the defining instance of a term in HTML. For example, I write HTML stands for hypertext markup language. In this term, HTML is the defining instance, so I can put HTML in the DFN tag. Also, this tag make its content italic. Next tag is mark. With the mark tag, you can highlight some text. Let's test it. As you can see, the content of the mark element is highlighted with yellow color. Next tag is PRE. Take a look at my HTML codes. I write one word, then I make a few spaces, then I write another word. Now I go to browser. As you can see, I just see one space between two words. Also, when I create a line break by pressing enter in the source codes, the line break is just for HTML codes and it's not working in the browser. Sometimes, we need to show a content as it is in the source codes, with line, bre with line breaks and spaces. In this case, we should use the PRE tag. No, I write some text inside a PRE element. I make a few spaces between two words. And I create a few line breaks between two other words. Now let's check the results. As you can see, this is just like the source codes. Next tag is a small. A small tag defines a smaller text. For example, I write my name is Alex Garden. Then I put Alex Garden inside a small element. As you can see, my name is shown as smaller. Next tag is sub. The sub tag defines subscript text. Subscript text appears half a character below the normal line and is sometimes rendered in a smaller font. For example, you can use this tag for chemical formulas. I want to write H2O chemical formula, so I write H2O, then I put number 2 in the sub element. It's shown as well. Next tag is SUP. The SUP tag defines sub superscript text. Superscript text appears half a character above the normal line and is so sometimes rendered in a smaller font. Superscript can be used for foot fonts, like this example that I am writing. It's shown as well.
Next tag is WBR, which is an empty tag. When a word is too long or you are afraid that the browser will break your lines at the wrong place, you can use the WBR element to add word break opportunities. I give you an example. Suppose you want to write a long text which have a long word, like this. I am very, 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 very and so much very happy. You can to put a WPR tag in any place of the word. For example, I put the WPR tag in here. I need some more re word. Some more. <laughs> Yes, as you can see, my line is bricked in correct place which I set it. This is the end of text formatting tags tab. In HTML, there is a group of tags called phrase tags. In HTML, a phrase tag is used to indicate that a block of text has a structural meaning. There is six phrase tags. EM, a string, code, SAM. K B D V A R. Previously, you were familiar with three of them: E M, a strong, and code. In this lecture, we are going to learn three other tags. The SAM tag defines sample output from a computer program. The KBD tag defines keyboard input. And the last phrase tag is the VAR tag, which defines a variable. I want to say something based on my experience. Phrase tags are almost useless, so don't keep your mind busy for these tags. In HTML, there is a group of elements or tags called semantic. A semantic element clearly describes its meaning to both the browser and the developer. In this lecture, I want to teach you HTML semantic tags, which their only usage is for sole topic. Using the semantic tags can optimize your site in the search engines. Their explanation doesn't matter, so I fastly introduce them. The first semantic tag is article, which you can put the text of your article in this tag. Next semantic tag is the aside tag, which defines some content aside from the content it is placed in. The aside content should be, rela should be related to the surrounding content. Next semantic tag is the details tag. The details tag specifies additional details that the user can view or hide on demand. I give you an example from this tag. It works as I said. Next tag is figure. The figure tag specifies self-contained content like illustrations, diagrams, photos, code listings, etc. Also, you can use a tag called fig caption in this element, which defines a caption for the figure element. I give you an example for these two tags.
Next semantic tag is header. Any site has a header. Header is a part of page which is placed in the topmost part of page. For example, I go to w3schools.com website. This part that I move the cursor over is the header of this page. The header part is fixed in every page of a website. As you can see, I am going to different parts of this website. As you can see, header is the same. We should put the header of our web page in the header element. So, this is usage of the header tag. Next tag is footer. Any site has a footer too, just like the head, just like the header. As you know, footer is placed in the bottom most part of the web page. Next semantic tag is main. The main tag defines the main content of a document. This tag must be unique in each page. For example, if your web page includes an article, you can put the article text in the main tag because obviously, if a page has an article, it is main content in that page. Next semantic tag is NAV. With this tag, you can define a set of navigation menu items. Suppose you have a menu in your site. You can put menu items in the nav element. I give you an example. I create a menu with some items. Now I put the menu in a nav element. But we should put menu items in another tag that I didn't introduce that yet. The B tag is not a standard for this work. Next semantic tag is section, which defines a section. The section tag is usually used for creating a standalone content in the page. Next tag is summary. As you remember, in HTML there is a semantic tag called details, which previously I explained it. Let's create a details element with a simple content. As you can see, user can view or hide this content. With the summary element, we can to define a title for the details. Like this that I am writing. No. My details element has a title. Next semantic tag is time. If you want to show a time in your page, you can put it in the time element. Visually, this tag does not affect the page, so there is no need for an example. Next semantic tag is dialog. With this tag, you can to define a dialog box or window. I give you an example. As you can see, the dialog element is not visible in the page because I should use a boolean attribute called open.
As you can see, no my dialog element is visible. And the last semantic tag is address. If you want to write an address in your page, you can put it in the address element. Usually, this tag does not affect the page, so there is no need for an example. In HTML, there is two types of elements, inline and black level. It means that each tag or element has a type which is inline or black level. What is different between them? First, let's learn about black level elements. A black level element always starts on a new line and takes up the full width of the browser. For example, the B tag, excuse me, the P tag is a black level element. An inline element does not start on a new line and only takes up as much width as necessary. For example, the B tag is an inline element. There are four more HTML tags which after I introduce them, this section will be end. First tag is matter. The matter tag defines a scalar measurement within a known range or a fractional value. This is also known as a gauge. You should use three attributes for this tag. The value attribute is used to set current value of the matter element. Two next values are min and max, which set the minimum and maximum value of the matter element. I give you an example. It works as I say. Also, you can't use only value attribute in decimal form, like this example that I am writing. Yeah, it works. Second tag, which is remain, is the praxis tag. This tag looks like the matter tag, but this is a little different. The progress tag represents the progress of a task. This tag takes two attributes, value and max. I give you an example. I set a progress in percentage. I set its current value. 35 It works as I said Also you can to dynamically move this progress bar with JavaScript codes Third tag is a span The span tag is used to group inline elements in a document. The span tag provides no visual change by itself. And the last tag is dive, which might be most useful tag in HTML. The dive tag defines a division or a section in an HTML document. Welcome to the third section, 
As you know, in this section, we are going to learn working with links. In a web page, you can to go to an other page using links. Even you can to go to a file like image or video using links. In the web development world, there are different types of links. In this section, we will be familiar with all of them. Let's start. The first tag we need to learn is A. With the A tag, you can to create a link in your web page. This tag has a necessary attribute called href. href attribute specifies the URL of the page or file the link goes to. For example, I give the Google address to the href attribute. Don't forget to write HTTP in the URL. Inside a element, I should write something to show. I write go to destination. As you can see, it works well. In the continue, I want to introduce some of attributes of the A tag. Access key attribute specifies a shortcut for the link. For example, I said H for this attribute. Now, if I wanna go to the destination link, I can press Alt and Access key which I set it, means H. I press Alt and H. As you can see, it goes to google.com. Next attribute for the A tag is target. There is four values for this attribute, but currently we just learned two of them. One of the values is underline cell, which is default value. If I set underline cell, the link opens in current tab. Next value is underline blank. If I set underline blank, my link opens in a new tab. It opens in a new tab as I said. Next attribute for the A tag is hreflang which specifies the language of the linked document. It takes two-letter code of a language as value. For example, I write en. As I said before, the use of attributes or tag like this is not necessary and just may be helpful for search engine optimiz optimization. There are two types of links, absolute links and relative links. First, let's learn relative links. I have an image in my desktop. As you can see, both my HTML document and image are in desktop. It means that both are in the same directory. Now I want to create a link in my HTML document from this image. So I can to write just image name as href. This is a relative link because we don't write a full pass of the image. Obviously, my image has a full pass. This is my image full pass. It, I mean this. I could put this as URL, but this will be an absolute link because we can't see the full pass of file in this link. When we use a file from an external site, actually we used an absolute link. Generally, when we can see HTTP in the link, so that's an absolute link. Now I want to put my HTML document in another folder, which is in desktop. So first I need to close this in the Reviver.
again I open it from your directory now let's test the image link excuse me yeah. it's not works because it has a relative link and passes are changed my main document is here and my image is in desktop it means that my image is up a level so i have to go up a level in my link for this work i just write dot dot a slash before the link now it works so when we want to go a level up we should use double dot a slash like this there is an empty tag called base which specifies the base url for all relative urls in a document the base tag must be inside the head element I define a base tag and I specify W3S schools website as a group. Now the base of all relative links is this URL. For example, I create a link. I specify image dot jpg as a shape. Actually this that I'm writing is the full pass of this link w3schools.com slash image dot jpg as a final point when you want to create a link with an absolute pass if your file is from internet you should type http column double slash before the link like this and if your link is from your local system you should specify your drive name like this drive name column double slash this is how absolute links are detected. There are two more types of links. In this lecture, we are going to learn these two types of links. The first type of link are email links. We can to create a link that when user click on it, an email software opens and the software is ready to send an email to the email address which we specify in the link. I create an A tag. Difference of email links is in the href attribute. For email links, you should type mail to column. Then you should write your desired email. I write myself email address. So this is syntax of email links. Let's check it. It works. The second type of links are anchor links. The best example for usage of anchor links is the Wikipedia. I open a random page in Wikipedia.
Here is the content list of the article. If I click on one of them, my browser scrolls to the title of that content. This is an anchor link which scrolls my browser to another place of current page. For create anchor links, first I create the element that we want to scroll to its place. So I create lots of line breaks because I need to add a scroll bar to my page. This is my destination element. I should give it an ID attribute. And as you know, the ID value can be anything. Now, at the first of page, I create an A tag to create an anchor link. And as href, I type a sharp. After sharp, I write the ID of my desired element. My desired element's ID is ID. So I write ID. Now let's test it. It works as expected. This is the end of third section. Welcome to the fourth section. In this section, we are going to learn working with image in HTML. In this section, we will learn how to add an image to an HTML document. The first and only tag we need to learn is the img tag. This is an empty tag which lets us to insert an image in an HTML document. The first and most important attribute of this tag is src, which specifies the URL of the image. I have an image on my desktop. I choose it. As you can see, my desired image is displayed in the page. The next attribute of img tag is alt, which specifies an alternate text for the image. Use of this attribute is highly recommended, because if the image does not load, this text will be displayed for users. The next two attributes of img tag are height and width. Height specifies the height of image in pixels and width specifies the width of image in pixels. I set both of them to 100. It works as I said. The next attribute is line desk. This attribute specifies a URL to a detailed description of an image. I leave it empty. Also, you can create a link from an image. Just put the img tag inside an A element. Like this example, the time writing.
I set Google address as href. It works as expected. Actually, you can to create link from any element in HTML. This is the end of the fourth section. Welcome to the fifth section. In this section, we are going to learn how to create HTML lists. In HTML, there are three types of lists. Ordered list, unordered list, and description list. First, let's learn ordered list. To create an ordered list, you should use the ol tag. And inside this tag, you must create an li tag for each item of your list. Look at this example. As you can see, my items are marked with their numbers. So this is an ordered list. Let's check the ol tag attributes. First and most important attribute of the ol tag is type. There is four values for this attribute. If you specify lowercase a as attribute, your, your list items will be marked with English lowercase. If you specify uppercase A as attribute, your list items will be marked with English uppercase. If you specify lowercase i as attribute, your list items will be marked with lowercase Roman numbers. If you specify uppercase i as attribute, your list items will be marked with uppercase Roman numbers. And the default value of this attribute is 1, which if be used list items will be marked with numbers the next attribute for the ol tag is a start which specifies the start value of an ordered list i specified this attribute for all of the ordered list types which i created i specified their number three As you can see, all types of ordered list starts from third case. And the last attribute for the ol tag is reversed, which is boolean. And if we use list order will be descending. It works as expected. The next type of lists is unordered list. To create an unordered list, you should to create a tag called ul and create li tag for each item inside it. Like this, the time writing. As you can see, in this unordered list, items are marked with a bullet. So this is the unordered list. The next type of list is description list. Description lists are consist of two parts, title and description. To create a description list, you should create a tag called DL. Inside the DL tag, 
you can use two tags. These two tags are DT and DD. DT is used for title of list. So the DT tag must be used only once for each list because it contains the title. DD tag is used for descriptions. You should create a DD tag for each item of your list. So let's see the results of list which I created. What you see is an unordered list. This is the end of fifth section. Welcome to the sixth section. In this section, we are going to learn HTML tables. To create a table, you should create a tag colored table. Inside the table element, you must use a tag colored TR to create each row. I create four rows. Inside the TR tags, you must create cells using the TD and TH tags. Only difference between the TD and TH tags is that the TH tag text is bold and its text align is center. Usually, TH tag is used for table heading. So, in the first row, I use the TH tag. In other rows, I use the TD tag. Now, let's see the results. What you see is a normal table in HTML. There is a tag colored caption that specifies the title for the table and must be used just after the table open tag. Now, as you can see, our table has a title. There is an attribute for the table tag which not supported in HTML5, but still browsers runs it. That attribute is border, which has two values, 0 and 1. If its value be 1, browser create a border for the table. It works as I said. In HTML, you can grouping the tables in two ways, grouping by row and grouping by column. To grouping tables by row, you should use three tags, tHead tag, tBody tag, and tFood tag. I created a table tag, so I put these three tags inside it. In the tHead tag and tfoot tag, you can just put one row, but in the tbody tag, you can put how much rows you want. Let me complete this table. It's finished.
to grouping a table by column, you should create a tag called cool group right after the table open tag. Then inside the cool group tag, you must create a tag called cool, which is an empty tag. The cool tag has an important attribute called a span. With this attribute, you can specify what columns from first are grouped for current cool tag. Let me give you an example. I create a table with three rows. Each row has three cells. It means my table has three columns. I create a cool group tag with two cool tags. For first call tag, I specify two for a span attribute. And for second call tag, I specify one for a span attribute. It means that first two columns are in one group and the third and last column is in one other group. This is my table. May you ask what's its use? You will understand its usage in the CSS language. In CSS, you can to specify a property for a group of rows or columns. This is the end of the sixth section. Welcome to the seventh section. In this section, we are going to learn HTML forms. It may be most important topic in HTML. What's a form? You deal with forms every day. When you send a comment in a site, login in a site, or register in a site, actually you work it with a form. For example, when you want to login in a site, usually you should enter your username and password and press the login button. A form like this that I said contains two text input and one submit button. I want to show you a form. This is Instagram website. Here is the login page. This is the login form which contains an input for username, an input for password, and a button for login which known as submit button in HTML. So in this section, we want to learn how to create a form in HTML. We start learning forms from next lecture. To create a form, first you should create a tag called form. All the form parts will put inside the form element. Let's check the form tag attributes. The first attribute of the form tag is action. Action attribute specify a URL which form data will send to. The page which set in the action attribute is known as action page. Action page codes are written in a dynamic language like PHP and ASP. The next attribute for the form tag is method. There is two methods to send form data, get and post. You can choose one of them. You can understand better the action attribute and method attribute in a PHP course. The next attribute for the form tag is enc type. Actually, I came to teach this attribute to you because its usage is for a dynamic language like PHP or ASP, but I tried to explain it as far as possible. The ENC type attribute specifies how the form data should be encoded when submitting it to the server. The first value for the ENC type attribute is application slash x dash www dash form dash URL encoded. This is the default value for this attribute. When this value is used, all characters are encoded before sent. 
spaces are converted to plus symbols and special characters are converted to ASCII hex values. The next value for the ENC type attribute is multipart slash for dash data. When it's used, no characters are encoded. This value is required when you are using forms that have a file upload control. The last value for the ENC type attribute is text plane. When this value is used, spaces are converted to plus symbols, but no special characters are encoded. I suggest that you don't busy your mind for these attributes which I introduced in this lecture because in poor HTML you never need these attributes. Learn these attributes in a dynamic language course like PHP. The next tag we need use in forms is the input tag which is empty. You should use this tag for all of the form inputs, like username input, password input, or even a submit button. All of these are an input. The first attribute for the input tag is name, which specifies a name for input. The name value must be unique in a document. Obviously, there are different types of inputs. You can specify the type of an input with an attribute called type. As default, the type of an input is text, which is used for a normal text field. You can see the text input in the result. The next value for the type attribute is password, which is used for a password field. As you can see, in a password field, characters are written secretly. Excuse me. The next type of input is radio. The radio input is used to create radio buttons. A group of radio buttons must have same value. For example, I create four radio buttons with same name attribute. As you can see, I just can select one of them because their name attribute is the same. Excuse me. The next type of input is checkbox. Checkbox is just like radio, but in a group of checkboxes, you can select more than one button. I create a group of checkboxes. As you can see, I can select more than one button. The next type of input is submit. A submit input creates a button which is known as submit button. When users click on the submit button, the form will send to the action page. 
For example, in a login form, login button is a submit button. The next type of input is button. A button input creates a button which does nothing as default. You can specify a function for a button using JavaScript language. The next type of input is reset. The reset input creates a button which reset form. The next type of input is file, which defines a file select field and a browse button for file uploads. What you see is a file input. The next value for the type attribute is email, which defines a field for an email address. The email input value is automatically validated to ensure and to ensure it is a properly formatted email address. Let's test it. I create a submit button then I go to browser I enter a non-email text as you can see I can't submit the form because I enter a non-email text in an email field. The next type of input is URL, which defines a field for a URL. The input value is automatically validated to ensure it is a properly formatted URL, just like email input. Color is the next type of input. The color input creates a color picker for users and users can select the color. The next type is date, which let users to choose a date. Excuse me, it must be date. Well, the next type is number, which let users to select a number. As you can see, this is a number input. The next type is range, which defines a range control, like a slider control. This control is for entering a number whose exact value is not important. When the type of an input is range or number, you can use some other attributes for the input tag. They are min, max, and stip. With the min and max attributes, you can specify the minimum and maximum value for the input. I choose 1 as minimum and 10 as maximum.
As you can see, I just cancelled a number between 1 and 10. The step attribute specifies the interval between legal numbers in an input field. I set its value to. Now, as you can see, when I want to change the numbers, they move two by two. There is no more values for the type attribute in the input tag. In this lecture, we continue learning attributes of the input tag. The next attribute of input tag is size, which specifies the visible width in characters of an input element. This attribute just can be used for the input, which their type is text or URL or email or password. It works as I said. The next attribute for the input tag is max length. The max length attribute specifies the maximum number of characters allowed in the input element. The next attribute is checked. This is a boolean attribute. It just can be used for checkboxes or radio buttons. If it be if it be used for a checkbox or radio button when the page loads, that input is checked by default. Let's test it. It works as I said. The next attribute is accept and just can be used for the file inputs. This attribute specifies a filter for what file types the user can pick from the file input dialog box. You should give it the MIME types of your desired file types. A MIME type is like this. Type slash subtype. For example, the MIME type of a PNG image is like this, image slash PNG, or MIME type of a MP4 video is like this, video slash MP4. Now I want that users just can select JPG and PNG image. For this work. I write their MIME types and I separate them with the comma symbol. As you can see here. I just can select PNG and JPG files. The next attribute for the input tag is value, which specifies the default value of an input. For example, I create a text input. I create a value attribute and I give it a simple text. When I refresh the page, the default value is in the input. The next attribute for the input tag is read only, which is boolean. When you use it for an input, users can only read it and they can't to change its content. For example, I create a text input with a simple text.
uh, use read only attribute for this. As we can see, I can change its content. There is another Boolean attribute which is like read only with a little difference. That's disabled. Disabled or disabled. When you use it for an input except you can't change its content you can't focus on in its content let's check it it works as i said the next attribute for the input tag is autofocus which is boolean it specifies that an input element should automatically get focus when the page loads i create a text input and I give it autofocus attribute. Now I refresh the page. As you can see, the input gets focused by default. The next attribute is placeholder, which specifies a short hint that describes the expected value of an input element. Let's test it on a text input. It works nicely. The next attribute is required, which is boolean. This attribute specifies that an input field must be filled out before submitting the form. I want to test it, so I create the submit button. I I use required for this input I leave this input empty and I press submit button as you can see I can't submit button when this is empty excuse me I can't submit the form when this is empty When you want to change the text on the submit button or normal button input, you can use the value attribute. For example, I specify a value attribute for the submit input. I give it a simple text. As you can see, the button text is changed. In this lecture, we want to create something called select box. Probably you worked with select boxes before. To create a select box, first we must create a select tag. Inside the select tag, I create three option elements. I specify a simple content for each option element. Now let's check the results. This is a select box. Actually, there is some input that can't be created with the input tag. They have their exclusive tags, like select box. The first attribute of the select tag is name, which specify a unique name for select box. The second attribute of the select tag is size, which defines the number of visible options. For example, I set it to. No, as you can see, two options are visible. The last attribute of the select tag is multiple, 
which is boolean. If this attribute is used, then users can select more than one option in the select box. When you want to select multiple options, you should keep control button pressed. It works as expected. In next lecture, you will learn about the option tags attribute. The first attribute of the option tag is value. In normal mode, when you select an option, its content will be sent to the action page. But sometimes you need to show one thing in the option but send another thing. In this case, you must use the value attribute for the option tag. For example, its content is 1 and obviously what will be sent to the server is 1. But if you want to show one thing to users and send another thing to the server, you can use the value attribute. I set value of this option tag numerical 1. So now what is shown to users is 1, but what will be sent to the action page is numerical 1. The next attribute of the option tag is selected, which is boolean. If it is used for an option, that item is selected by default. For example, I specify selected attribute to second option tag. Now I refresh the page. As you can see, second option is selected by default. There is two types of select boxes. The first type of them is combo box. Uh, this is a combo box because its items will be shown by clicking on it. But when you specify a size value for the select tag, it turns into a list box which is second type of select boxes. Let's test it. Hold on, this is a list box. There is another tag called opt group. With this tag, you can grouping select box options. For example, I create a select box with nine options. Now I divide them into three groups using OPT group tag. Now you should use an attribute for the OPT group tags color label. Yes. Now as you can see they are in three groups of three. You are familiar with normal text input. Now look at this text input. As you can see, when I click on it, a list of predefined options appears to me. And when I type something, similar options remain. This is a data list. To create a data list, first, we need to create a text input. Then I create a tag called data list. I give it an ID called data. 
Now inside the data list element, I create an empty tag colored option for each item. Please attention, this option tag that we are using it is different with that option tag that we used in select boxes. I uh, need four items, so I create four option tags. We must specify the name of the options using the value attribute. I write a simple text for each of them. And finally, I should connect the data list to the input tag. For this work, there is an attribute for the input colored list. It takes the ID of your desired data list as value. So I do it. This is end. Now let's check our data list. It works as, as expected. This is the end of the seventh section. Welcome to the eighth section. In this section, we are going to learn how to use video and ID files in a web page using HTML5. You can put a video in your web page. As you have seen, YouTube has done it so far. To put a video in your web page, you must create a tag colored video. Then inside, the video tag you should create an empty tag colored source the source tag has an attribute colored src which specify the address of your video i have a video on my desktop colored video.mp4 i write its name in the src attribute Then I have to write the MIME type of video in an attribute color type. I do it. It's almost ready. Let's check the results in the browser. Well done. My video is shown, but I can't play this video because my video has no con control buttons such as play. To solve this problem, there is a boolean attribute colored controls, which must be used for the video tag. I use it. No, I can't play this video. Also, I can see other controls. Oh, what a cute deck. You can also play an ID in your web page. To do this, just use an ID tag instead of the video tag. I have an ID on the desktop called ID.mp3. I write its name. In the src attribute now let's check it as you can see i can play the music it's time to learn the attributes of ideo video and source tags First, let's learn the video tag attributes. The first attribute of the video tag that we learned before is controls, which shows the control buttons of video. The next attributes of the video tag are height and width. As you probably know, this attribute specifies the width and height of the video in pixels. I set both 200.
As you can see, video size is changed. The next attribute is loop, which is boolean, and when present, it specifies that the video will start over again every time it is finished. I use it. Yes, as you can see, my video start over again after it is finished. The next attribute is muted, which is boolean. When present, it specifies that the ideal output of the video should be muted. Yes, it works. The next attribute of the video tag is autoplay. If this attribute be used, the video plays automatically after the page has been loaded. It works as expected. The next attribute of the video tag is poster which specifies an image to be shown while the video is downloading or until the user hits the play button. I have an image on my desktop called poster.jpg. I write its name in the poster attribute. I remove autoplay attribute. As you can see, that image shows before I play video. There is five attributes for the IDU tag. Autoplay, controls, loop, muted, and SRC. Their usage is just like in the video tag. So you learned these attributes before and I will not waste your time. So let's get down to the source tag attributes. You learned SRC and type attributes for the source tag. There is just one more attribute called media. You must learn this attribute in a CSS course and no, you are not ready to learn this attribute. So actually the video and IDU tags topic is ended. There is just one more point. When you use video or IDU tag, you can create more than one source tag. But why? Because the video or IDU in first source tag might can't be played. It can happen for any reason. To solve this problem, you can create one or more other source tag to play if first video or I do not play. Also, after source tags, you can write a text to be shown if none of videos or ideas were played. There is another tag to play multimedia files on the web page. That's embed tag. With this tag, you can put both video and ID files. This is an empty tag. The first attribute of this tag is src, which specifies the address of multimedia file. I have a video on desktop, I write its name. As you can see, my video is displayed in my web page. The next attribute of the embed tag is type, which specifies the MIME type of chosen file. The next attributes are width and height, which specifies width and height of your video in, in, in pixels. I set both 200. As you can see, my video size is changed. This is the end of the 8th section. Welcome to the 9th and last section. This section is about multiple web pages in HTML. Let's go to Dreamweaver. I create two links using the A tag. I name it Apple 
and name it banana as you can see I have two other HTML documents on my desktop apple.html and banana.html there is an apple picture in apple.html and a banana in banana.html well let's back to dreamweaver I write the apple.html address for this link and banana.html for this link there is a tag called iframe I create an iframe tag the iframe tag has an attribute colored name its value can be anything I write window now I create a target attribute for my links Now I give them the name of my iframe as value. Now let's check the results. I click on banana. As you can see, banana.html loads in iframe. Now I click on apple. Apple.html loads in iframe. So this is iframe. Also, you can specify width and height of iframe using the width and height attributes. Well done. This is the end of this course. I am very very happy because you were in my course. Hope you found this course helpful. Please improve me with your comments. Thank you so much. Goodbye.